Hello and welcome to Good or Bad. It's Friday the 13th again, so I guess I will continue to chip away at one of the longest running horror franchises. Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. This movie, as with most of the Friday sequels, kicks off with a short recap. Jason kills people, can't seem to die, so Tommy chained him up at the bottom of the lake. Right, so we are all up to speed. So what happens in this one? Someone frees chained up Jason, Jason kills people, person who freed chained up Jason, chains Jason back up. In a nutshell, that's basically what happens, but what the hell, let's kill some time and take a closer look. So this is Tina. She is our main character. She is played by La Park Lincoln. However, the movie kicks off briefly when she was a child. We see her here, played by Jennifer Banco. She is currently staying at Crystal Lake and sees her parents arguing, so she storms out of the house. She runs away and climbs on a boat and is very upset with her dad. Go away! I hate you! I wish you were dead! Oh my god! No! So Tina is telepathic. That's a thing in this series now. You know what? I can buy it. Our antagonist is an immortal zombie serial killer that will one day fight a dream demon, then go to space. So I'll allow it. Jumping years later, Tina has been in therapy, and her doctor recommended a nice lovely trip back to Crystal Lake, in an effort to confront the place where her father died and hopefully start moving on. But what is actually going on is Dr. Cruz here is a money-grabbing fame whore who wants to make a name for himself by studying Tina's telepathic abilities. I guess that means he dies then. <laughs> I find his death doubly satisfying given the fact that he used Tina's mother as a human shield. Oh, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. No! 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 What a shit back. So Jason escapes his watery prison because Tina is stood at the spot her dad died and wishes she could bring him back, but instead releases Jason. And don't you go saying that all of this is an unlikely series of events. Because I find it quite believable. An immortal zombie gets locked up at the bottom of a lake, then many years later a girl with rare telepathic abilities just so happens to be in Crystal Lake and coincidentally, on the very spot Jason is imprisoned, flips out and kills her dad. Quite a common occurrence, if you ask me. So yeah, now Jason is above water, he goes about doing what he does best. And as there always are in these movies, there is a small selection of young people who are staying at the lake to celebrate their friend's birthday. Well, it would be rude to not have a group of people skinny dipping and shagging each other for Jason to easily murder his way through. This time, though, he comes back with a bit of water damage and donning his lovely new neck piece chain. Also, he is played again by Kane Hodder, the best Jason. So, as person after person gets killed, we get treated to the not at all overly used outcast trying to fit in with other people's storyline. This goes nowhere. Mostly because they all end up dead. And we also get the running theme of Tina is adamant that she caused a man to appear from the lake and then she keeps seeing random things like a machete buried into a wall. But nobody believes her until it's too late. It doesn't help that she is actually having hallucinations and can't always tell what's real. So while everyone chooses not to believe Tina whenever she says that there's someone untoward about, Jason kills them off one by one, with the death scenes ranging from a quick stabby death to something a bit more fun like this. Ah, you gotta love the sleeping bag death scenes. So Tina takes a liking to this guy Nick, played by Kevin Spiritus. He is one of the birthday celebrating party goers, and is the only one of that group that manages to make it out of this movie alive. When Jason is finished with the disposables, he goes after Tina and Nick. But whenever Tina gets cornered, she gives him one of her looks. So the scenes where Jason gets his ass kicked by Tina's telepathy are honestly quite good, but sadly not good enough to stop him for good. 
let's see what she does next. Okay, that wasn't as good as before. Now you're just throwing furniture at him. Tina, you cannot stop Jason with a sofa. Many have tried, and they have all failed. Okay, that was better. I know Jason must weigh a fair bit, but I'm questioning the build quality of those stairs. But a little fall ain't gonna be enough to stop Jason. He gets back up and grabs Nick. Oh, you're not looking so good these days, are you, Jason? That was cool. But enough of this, it's time to wrap it up. No matter how many telepathic attacks she uses, Jason just keeps coming. That is until all hope is lost, and then suddenly Tina managed to summon her father's spirit, who grabs Jason and drags him back down and chains him back up. Well, this film has been absolutely ludicrous all the way through, so why the hell not? I can buy that. In fact, I think pretty much anything could have happened and it wouldn't have felt weird at this point. So Tina and Nick get taken off to safety, and that marks the end of part 7. We never see either of them again. This was a fairly goofy entry into the series, but you know what? I kinda like it. It has some good death scenes, especially the iconic sleeping bag kill. And the effects artists and designers have done an excellent job with Jason's appearance in this film. I think I've said this before, but one thing this franchise absolutely nails and is very consistent with is how in each movie Jason looks increasingly damaged and decomposed. That being said, the characters themselves in this film aren't all that special, they are passable at best. However, this movie does have my absolute favourite oh shit expression on anyone's face. Don't go out there! Fuck you. Now fuck you both! Yeah, nothing good ever comes from storming out of a house in a horror film. In fact, come to think of it, this movie is full of that. Tina storms out of the house twice in this film. The first time causes her dad's death, and the second time causes Jason's release. And finally, Melissa storms out and is met with Jason. There you go! The moral of the story is don't storm out of the house with a temper! Because if you do, weird shit will happen. Also, this film has a cat jump scare in it. I know it's a cliche, but it's a cliche I can respect. I would say though that while I personally enjoy this film, it is one of the lower entries into this franchise. So yeah, it's not at all going head to head with the likes of the original film or parts three and six. This is just your bog standard Jason kills people but there's a telepathic girl fighting back. If you're looking for a serious slasher film, don't bother with this one. But if you're looking for something that you can have a laugh with, this'll scratch that itch. You've been watching Good or Bad, and I'll see you next time.